Hey, it's Kyle here, and we're starting a new full career in Kerbal's space program. Now, I've been playing KSP for quite a few years, but I've never really done a complete career playthrough, despite what some people might call a excessive amount of playtime. So we're going to set this all up now, and we're going to go with a normal difficulty, but we'll turn off crew respawns, because if they die, they die. We'll activate the other launch sites, and then over in advanced settings, we're also going to activate allowing all action groups, because there's no reason not to, let's be honest here. Everything from here on is mod related, and any mods I do mention in this video will be linked in the description below. So we've got community tech tree, we're going to hide empty nodes and tidy that up a bit, and we've got research bodies as well. Research bodies will be changing the default planets and moons we can see for the game to just the Sun, aka Kerbal, Kerbin, and the Mun. We'll have to find all other planets and moons as part of our playthrough by using a new facility, the Observatory, and using space telescopes. We've based our agency Kaxa off Japan's agency JAXA, but it's the Kerbal version instead of Japan. Uh, it's not the Kyle agency actually, um, now that I think about it. But yes, let's get this career underway. Alright, we're now in the Kerbal Space Center, and we're going to head straight to the Vehicle Assembly Building and build a simple rocket for our first launch. And we're going to basically use the only parts we have available, the capsule, the solid rocket booster, and some parachutes. Now, this mightn't seem like much, and absolutely, you could bootleg this so that you could just stack solid rocket boosters on top of solid rocket boosters and just win for it. But we're not going to do that. So we're going to name this series of rockets the Plunk. Why? Well, that's the sound it's going to hopefully make when it lands in the ocean, instead of exploding on re-entry. Now, a rocket is great, but we do need some objectives to aim for if we're going to call this a career. So to mission control we go, and we'll take two simple quests off this list. Do some science and reach for the stars. Both of these require a suborbital trajectory, meaning we need to get to space. You might have noticed the lack of the usual exploration targets in the list, and this is because of the main mod we're using to make Kerbal's career mode much more interesting, Strategia. So over here in the administration building, we'll be greeted with a very different list of options compared to stock KSP. Strategia changes the game to include strategies and targets for how you play, and when you activate these objectives, you receive additional funds towards those milestones, and it's going to tailor the contracts you're offered to align with those objectives. The trade-off being is that you'll now only receive 20% of the funds you would otherwise for getting achievement milestones on other planets, so it makes you focus on that singular objective. But we can't do much until we get up in the atmosphere, so let's get into our first crew launch, and of course our pilot, classic KSP, is Jeb. We've collected as much science as we can using the wonderful Science Alert mod, which we'll eventually learn to hate over time, not because it's a bad mod, but because it can stop time warps unless you change the default settings, and its alert noise can become a little bit repetitive. But we've gone up, we haven't ended up going too high into the air, but we've managed to collect a decent amount of science, and we'll come right back down and thankfully land at the Kerbal Space Center. Ah, uh, I wish parachute landings were faster, so let's speed through this. So we have landed Plunk, we're going to pick up any extra science we can before jumping back to the center. And as you can see, we've bought a respectable 21.3 science from our first flight, and Jeb has earned 1 XP. And through the fantastic mod Final Frontier, Jeb's even earned himself some ribbons for his trouble. So now it's time to spend our science and improve our next rocket. It's not much of a choice, but we'll be picking up basic rocketry, engineering 101 and survivability and heading straight back to the VAB to build Plunk 2. We're updating Plunk's design to include a liquid engine now that we've unlocked it, a load more science experiments thanks to a cargo bay, three stages with solid rockets, and we'll be bringing in Val as our pilot for this flight. We're also going to try and recover as many parts as possible from our launches, with reusability kind of a key part of this whole series. We're using the stage recovery mod, which lets us recover funds from spent stages as long as they have enough parachutes on them to be recovered in normal circumstances. This is great considering NASA refurbished the boosters for the space shuttle and SpaceX was recovering even the payload shell until recently, so there's no reason we can't do the same. I quickly went back and removed those upper stage winglets as they cause the rocket to become a bit unstable during launch if there's any shimmy. The same as Plunk 1, we're not aiming for anywhere other than an ocean landing, along with maximising our science collection. 
I'm also going to throttle down our liquid engine when we're hitting the maximum aerodynamic pressure known as max Q. You might notice that your rocket's getting a cone of wind around it or even flame, suggesting you're pushing against the atmosphere and therefore wasting fuel. Kerbal doesn't really have a true max Q system in place, but I just prefer to toggle down the thrust for a little bit to make sure we don't destroy the parachutes and to make sure we're not wasting delta V pushing through heavy atmosphere. It's a personal preference more than anything else, and I really hope KSP2 will have that as an advanced option for its aerodynamic system because that'd be a pretty cool feature. So we've got a pretty good trajectory to get ourselves above Kerbin's 70 km Kármán line, or should it be the Kerman line, and get into space. Let's give ourselves a little bit of an extra horizontal push and make sure we have a splashdown landing for our second rocket. We've made a lot of first milestones this time around, which of course means money, science and fame, all quite important to a space program. Maybe we'll even get lucky and the Kerbal Noughts will be offered a super cheap car by a famous motoring company. Now, if you're wondering about the information readout I have on the right of the screen, it's a mod called Kerbal Engineer Redux. Now, it's a very popular mod for good reasons, and while a lot of KSP's updates have brought Kerbal Engineer's ideas into the base game, I still like to use it a lot for its on-screen HUD at the top of the screen, and particularly for re-entry, as it gives you a good readout on which parts are at risk of overheating. Often, there's not much you can do, but you can at least try and protect certain parts by keeping them out of the re-entry heat cone or rotating the craft to try and burn off speed a little bit quicker. I can't wait to unlock air brakes so I can control the re-entry a little bit better, especially as we'll be keeping a lot of these larger crafts intact as we re-enter to try and recover as many funds as possible. And as we begin those final few moments of descent into splashdown, we'll recover some additional science thanks to our barometric module, which uh, thankfully means we can get a little bit of information out of Kerbin's oceans while we're here. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without a quick surface EVA. So we've collected 79.6 science points, 9,000 funds, Val's earned 1 XP, and she's also earned herself a handful of merit medals, including the illustrious first Kerbal in space ribbon. And we've cleared out our contract list, so that means it's time to start moving towards the orbital contracts, which we'll have to wait for the next video. Thanks so much for watching, and for everyone who's subscribed over the past couple of weeks, it's greatly appreciated. I'm also still working on that Artemis 3 mission, which is going to be probably coming in two parts, because we've got to actually put the Lunar Gateway Station to orbit first. So until next time, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next pass.